Hello everyone, I'm Nate and welcome to my channel. We are back on the beglary train. If you've been following uh, this channel and you've been following uh, this series on how to sling beglary, we've covered pretty much everything from the very beginning of like how to actually string up your beglary and size it and all those other things to maintenance and basic stuff to the very first tricks like rebounds and so on. In our last video, I talked about some basic rolls and things like that. Um, and so we're gonna continue with that series. Um, not necessarily that these are the next tricks that you absolutely have to learn. I don't think, um, it's, it's maybe not quite the same as Gilyu in that sense, that like there certainly are tricks that influence others and I think it's good to learn this trick before this one, uh, but you can skip around uh, if you're struggling with something or you just don't really enjoy one trick, you can skip to another one and try that out. So uh, there's gonna be three basic things that we're gonna learn in this one. Uh, first off, we're gonna be learning about connecting uh, rolls. And so that's gonna look like ladders and um, also around the world and tricks like that, but connecting, that's gonna be the key part. So hopefully just kind of some of the tips that I've learned and gonna be passing on to you will help with that. And then we'll also talk about springs. Um, and some of the basic concepts of that. I think those are really fun too, to kind of throw in the mix as you're kind of building more confidence and building maybe sort of a little short combo. Uh, and then lastly, we're also gonna be talking about whirls and then we may even cover a little bit of like a zoot, which is a basic kind of concept with that. So, all right, that's, that's the idea. All right, that's what we're gonna talk about, those three main categories, but there'll be some other things that kind of filter in there from time to time. Um, all right, so we are throwing once again, I've been throwing uh, since, you know, first video, this exact set here. These are the, uh, the mini Hydras from Around Square. These are the Delrin and stainless steel ones. Uh, you saw on the first video, I, 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 you know, I put this cord on. This is these exact same ones. So I think that keeps some consistency. You don't need to like go out there and buy the most expensive beglery at all. Um, you can if you really want to. Um, but it doesn't need that and you can kind of use any shape or, or what have you for pretty much almost any trick um, At least the ones we're going over now in future videos I might switch it up just because I do think some shapes are maybe a little easier for certain uh, Tricks, but for now we're gonna stick with the uh, mini hydras first one We're gonna talk about our connecting rolls downward rolls and Then we have upward rolls so on. Okay, so that's and then we talked about that with each of the fingers and so on. So what we're basically gonna talk about today is connecting each, so roll down and then connecting it to the other finger so you can do more rolls, you can do consecutive ones, you can do as many as you want, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about them, switch the camera angle, and uh, we'll have a, a little breakdown there, okay? All right, so again, we're talking about connecting rolls. Now, as, as we talked about before in the last video, rolls are really all about timing because it's really easy kind of like you know, either go be too uh, early or too late and then you lose it and you know, you're playing floor stall, all right? If you've not gotten rolls down, you need to go ahead and go back and learn that well. And as usual, we're wanting to make sure that the beads are as far forward on our fingers as we possibly can. All right, so what we're basically gonna do is we're gonna do a roll. I'm gonna pause right here and point out a problem that a uh, bad habit that I've formed when you're pinching there, especially as you see here, as I'm moving from high grip to mid grip, and I'm using my thumb to kind of bring in and pinch there, that's not a good habit to form. And uh, it's one of those things that I didn't notice until actually after I filmed it, you know, and slowed things down and realized, hmm, that doesn't look right. That's not quite good form. What you ultimately need to be doing is just the pinch. All it needs to be is between the pointer finger and the middle finger there. Try to keep that thumb out of there, unlike I'm doing there. But we're here to learn, and I guess I'm teaching myself how to beglary as well. All right, on with the trick. And a pinch and a roll, okay? I lost control there, but you see what I'm saying? Pinch and roll, okay? All right, so. I just went ahead and just did a, you know, index finger to a mid, middle finger and down. So the idea then is to roll, pinch, then release and roll, pinch, release and roll, pinch. And it's that same kind of motion as we talked about last time. That's kind of like the almost, it's a little subtle shake of a hand, not like aggressive shake, but just like a little, a little, little movement here, all right? Okay. All right, so pinch, release, and roll. 
pinch. It's a, it's a timing thing. It's gonna take some time. Uh, take your time to get used to that. Practice, 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 practice. Sit on the couch and be watching a show or binge watching something and, uh, and, and kind of take your mind off of it. We talked about that before. Kind of get more of the feel of it. Uh, that's kind of how I learned as I'm kind of like zoning off and I'm not really looking at my hand because it kind of can mess with you actually a little bit. You want to get the feel of it so that your hand is naturally building that muscle memory. You can also do what's called around the world, which is a index finger roll to then um, a two finger roll here with your middle and, um, and your ring finger. I would go ahead and practice this two finger roll as well. It feels a little bit different. There are some other tutorials on that one as well. I'm not gonna really cover that. I feel like it comes kind of naturally once you just mess with that a little bit. I don't think there's really any other helpful tips as far as two finger rolls. It's just kind of getting used to that. Um, you can also do up top, which, which is called a, um, a uh, pistol roll, which you just use your pointer finger and your middle finger. So practice those on their own. So there you have it for connecting rolls. And so again, you can kind of mess with that and just keep practicing that, that roll, that pinch, that release, that kind of that flow of it. It takes some time getting used to. Um, I'll be honest, I don't necessarily love kind of like combos where it's just all it is is just a ladder. I mean, it, it shows skill and that's cool that you can be able to do that. But I think as far as when you get into more kind of building a little combo of your own, um, it looks a little monotonous to me. And so get used to that. I think it's a good skill to learn to go down the ladder and up the ladder. We didn't talk about that as well, but it's the same basic idea of rolling up. You're gonna kind of have that same motion and pinch and roll up to the next finger as well. So again, I, get used to maybe trying it without the slips. Um, I think when I was learning and I was, that's what I was doing at first, and it was actually a hard habit to break of not doing those slips. Um, and I kind of had to relearn it kind of. So. Maybe there's some uh, sage advice there, perhaps. Uh, try to learn first thing you can with the, without the slips, okay? I think it looks smoother and looks, it looks like it has more control. Next thing we're gonna talk about are springs. Um, and uh, it's, it's, they're pretty easy, I think, but it kind of gets you into the idea of doing a roll. And so this is the basic idea. All right, so let's talk about springs these are one of my favorite tricks uh, it's kind of a fun uh, little repeater as well you can do like infinite uh, springs and so the idea is to well first off uh, go ahead and do a regular grip in the a mid grip here and we're gonna go ahead and just do a wrap now this is gonna tell you if your strings your cord is not quite long enough if it's not reaching down here it should be reaching all the way down so that when you release you have something to work with okay because if it's too short it's just not it's not gonna do well Okay, so that's the idea and you can kind of repeat that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give it some momentum and we're gonna swing around the index finger, okay? And then we're gonna release this bottom bead and as it comes around, we're gonna swing it back around again. All right, now the trickiest part to this is this, this half roll, okay? So I'm gonna take my, my middle finger here and I'm gonna push it into here and I'm gonna bring it back down into my into mid grip.
right, the last one that we're gonna talk about are whirls, and we'll also talk about zoots for just a minute because it's also one of my favorite tricks. And I think if you've gotten this far and you can get the concepts of the others, uh, this will be a nice little add-on to that as well. All right. right, back here, all right. So, um, all right, so the idea behind a whirl is just we're going behind the hand. I'm gonna pause here once again as I'm watching this and playing it back for myself. I'm realizing I'm not doing a proper whirl here either. Now you'll see that in, when I do the zoot, it is a partial whirl, it's not a full whirl. If you would like to know how to do a full whirl, I will have a link in the description where Musclebone has his tutorial. It's a great one and one that I need to get more confident with. However, if you watch the zoot that I do later here, you'll see that I do a half whirl in the first part of the trick. So if you wanna know what a whirl is, or at least a half whirl, pay attention to the breakdown of the zoot. All right, on with the trick. Okay, all right, so that's, it's really not that complicated, but um, I went ahead and showed you this kind of concept where it kind of, it's kind of a nice thing to break things up. It's similar to like uh, how you would think of maybe a slip where it kind of can give you a little bit of a pause. And let me talk about zoots. This is maybe one of my favorite tricks, uh, top five at least. Um, once I got it, I was like, ooh, I got it. I felt, I felt like I, I accomplished something major in beglary, all right? So the idea here is you're gonna start in mid grip and as you go back, you're gonna go ahead and put it into fakey top grip, okay? All right, or high grip. I always get those two mixed up. All right, and then we're gonna be in fakey here. So as we come back, but it's, what's gonna happen is it's gonna land back into mid grip regular here. So that's what a that's what a, sli a zoot looks like, okay? So that's what a zoot looks like. You can do a really cool repeater. You can basically go as long as you want. We're gonna go ahead and again start mid grip. We're gonna come back around. And so as we go into this fakie, we're gonna kind of open up here again so that we're open up in our mid grip here so that the bead can kind of sling back down. All right, and that's how it's gonna look. So it's top. All right, so we're gonna keep this open. Keep your fingers nice and loose, but tight at the same time. You don't wanna to be too loose where you're gonna throw it out, you know? Uh, but you want them nice and tight so that whenever you pinch, you hold tight, but you can release pretty quickly. Very similar to like that, it's not the same motion, but it's similar concept as the rolls connecting where it's like you, you roll, pinch, and then roll. All right, let me pick up my begler. I'll show you that one more time. Uh, so it's gonna go back. So it's a hard pinch back here on the uh, top grip. And that's that. Okay, that's gonna do it for uh, this segment of learning to sling beglery. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Um, if you are confused about something or I didn't explain something as, as well as you think I should have, uh, if you're a more veteran uh, you know, player than myself and have some other hints and tips that you can maybe allow us to uh, know your knowledge in the comments, please let me know. Please let everyone know. Um, I'm about a year into this and so I'm not nearly as veteran, of course, as many people in the beggar community, but this is what I've learned and these are the things that have been helpful for me. So if you're newer on this journey, hope this was helpful. Um, so again, I, I encourage you as you're learning these things and if you've kind of been progressing with the different videos, now this is the third one, uh, that maybe you can start connecting those things and building just a little simple combo. Doesn't need to be super complicated. And that was completely improvised. So, <laughs> but you, you get what I'm saying. Just mess with these elements that we've talked about in these videos and start connecting things um, and just have some fun, all right? That's gonna do it for now. Until the next one, later.